Let's talk about charging the Mach-E. One of the frequent questions, or I guess comments I get about any EV that we review here at Alex and Autos is, yeah, but what about the charging network? This is really a tricky kind of nuanced conversation. Tesla is the only EV manufacturer out there, and apologies to everybody out there that's gonna complain about this. Why are you talking so much about Tesla in a video that's not about Tesla? Because they're the benchmark. They're the 800 pound gorilla in the room. So obviously they have to be in this discussion. Anyway, Tesla is the network out there that everybody knows about. They have proprietary charging connectors. They have supercharging stations. They have destination chargers. You can plug your Tesla in. The vehicle is immediately recognized. If the charging isn't free, then it will authorize your account and charge you for the charging. It's a really simple, very, very elegant system. But in a rational world, the real benefit to the supercharging network is not necessarily the number of plugs or honestly in my head the fact that Tesla has made it so simple it's the location of the plugs Tesla deployed the supercharger network in areas that didn't have Tesla's now to some folks that makes an awful lot of sense but to businesses out there that are trying to make money off of their charging stations or at least trying to service their customers it doesn't make sense if there are no EVs there so why would you put an EV charging station in the middle of nowhere Wyoming where there aren't any EVs well Tesla would do that because that's so you can drive across Wyoming to wherever it is that you want to go. So the big advantage really to the supercharger network and that still exists today to a certain extent is location, location, location. If you want to drive your DC fast charging vehicle like this Ford Mustang Mach-E across the country, you can do that, but you cannot do that across I-90 on the north part of the US because there is no DC fast charge network with stations appropriately spaced for that longer distance interstate travel there. But you could go across uh, Colorado, you could go down across Arizona, Texas, etc. And aside from that geographically large gap up there, the rest of the U.S. is honestly very well covered with other DC fast charging stations. However, not all DC fast chargers are made equal. Some will support the faster charge rate that we find in this Mach-E. The Mach-E will charge at around supposedly 150 kilowatts. We're going to test that out in this video, so be sure and stay tuned. That wasn't a uh, bait and switch thing in the title. We are going to talk about DC fast charging in this model. And the base Mach-E will supposedly charge at around 115 kilowatts. But if you take a look at the DC fast charging network on sites like PlugShare or the US government site, a lot of DC fast charge connectors supporting the CCS standard or the older now defunct Chatamo standard will max out at about 50 kilowatts. That's fast enough to charge, for instance, a Chevy Bolt at its max rate, but that is significantly slower than the peak rates that we see in the Tesla Model 3 or the Tesla Model Y. Those will charge extraordinarily quickly. But on the other hand, if you take a look at the latest maps for most suburban and urban areas, there are definitely a wide variety of charging stations to choose from. If, for instance, I pull up this map right here, a map of the places where you can DC fast charge this Ford Mustang Mach-E at its peak rate, you can see that compared to the Tesla supercharger network at the same or higher rate, locations are actually not that far apart and the number of stations are relatively equal. Bearing in mind that Tesla outsells all of the other EV players in America right now combined, it's no surprise that supercharging stations typically have more plugs available. That's another common thing that I've heard. And that is definitely true. The flip side to that is that those supercharger stations are more likely to be full or near capacity. In my area, when I've driven a Tesla, the Tesla Model 3 that we owned, or Teslas that I've rented for videos here at Alex on Autos, it's pretty likely that the stations are quite busy. But on the other hand, if you go to the average Electrify America or EVgo charge station, they're probably going to be fairly empty. There's not as much struggle for those charging connectors. But when a lot of folks talk about network, they're not simply talking about connectors, they're talking about how easy is this to use. Well, this Mach-E is one of the first vehicles to basically do what Tesla has done so well, and that is automatically authorize the vehicle to charge when you plug it in. So. Theoretically, this Mach-E, when I go to the Electrify America station that we're about to go to, I'll go ahead and turn on the car here, this will not require me to do anything with an app or a card or anything. You just plug it in and go. Now that's gonna be absolutely mind-blowing for some EV shoppers out there that have never experienced a Tesla, but honestly, for Tesla shoppers, it's gonna be, hey, that's another day. The caveat to this is that not all EV charging stations are capable of doing this just yet, and not all have agreed, of course, to work with Ford. So at this point in time, there are just two EV charging networks, I guess you could say, that are integrated into the Ford Pass system, which Ford is calling the largest charging network in North America. Now, the tricky bit is in the nuance again, because of course, Tesla vehicles can use J1772 connectors with an adapter, and Tesla vehicles can also use Chatamo connectors with an adapter, although they're not gonna charge as fast as they would at a dedicated Tesla supercharged system. In the United States, there is no CCS to Tesla adapter at the moment. 
I would say in a rational world without the nuance, Tesla still has the largest charging ability, I guess you'd say, not necessarily network, because you could add all of those Chatamo connectors and the J1772 charging connectors into the mix. All of those can charge a Tesla. All right, so I got myself down to the 10%, so let's uh, see how long this takes to charge. And theoretically, it should start here. It does say connecting to vehicle. Uh, so let's see if it actually does its thing. Processing payment, so it actually, actually works. Hey, so we're, uh, we're gonna start to easy fast charging here uh, with the Ford Pass Dookie, and uh, now we get to see how fast it actually charges. A little bit over. This one now is uh, up at 112 kilowatts, as I can see. Uh-oh. Maybe I should try a different, uh, different one. Okay, let's try a different plug here. Uh, maybe that one isn't working. So unfortunately there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven charge connectors here. So let's give this one a whirl. Yeah, we're cooking with gas now. It's up to 122 kW. Uh, so let's see how uh, this takes. The car says that we should be done charging by 1201 to 80% of the battery. So let's see how that goes. So things are definitely accelerating now. We hit uh, 126 kW now, and things are definitely uh, uh, cooking along. Again, the faster charge rates should peak uh, at some point here soon, right around 25 or so percent of the battery in a lot of EVs out there. So let's see how it goes. Since DC fast charging takes a while, at these speeds, this vehicle is going to take about 40 minutes to fill up to 80%. If this was a Tesla Model 3, it would probably do that in maybe about 5 or 10 minutes less, but still half an hour is consumed by this fast charging event. That's why Tesla spends so much money on their infotainment system and adding games, things like that, something that we do not see in the Mustang Mach-E. Fortunately, however, it will power an iPad with the USB-C connector right there on the dashboard, so I've brought my own entertainment. Personally, I think this is a fine compromise. The battery is approaching 80% capacity, and one thing that struck me as interesting is that even though this battery is not hitting the peak of what Ford is claiming, it looks like we hit about 122, 123 kilowatts there, it's actually maintaining a pretty rapid charging rate up here at 78%. We're still consuming uh, 81 kilowatts of power. That is more than we see in the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y up here near 80% in most of the benchmarks that I've seen. So even though the peak is not as high, it does seem to maintain that approximately 80 to 100 kilowatts, just a little bit longer than some of the other EVs out there. But you will notice that you will still go 10% to 80% a little bit faster in something like the Model Y. Now, part of that is because it has a smaller battery pack, of course. This has an 88 kilowatt hour usable battery pack versus approximately 72 to 75 kilowatt hours usable in the Tesla Model Y. So some of the longer charging times that we see in the Mach-E are because of the size of the battery pack. And that all comes down to efficiency. The Mach-E is not as efficient as the Tesla Model Y. That means that it's going to take you longer to charge because you have to get more energy into the battery to go that same number of miles. Because filling the last 20% of a battery always takes more time, you'll notice that the charge rate has really drastically dropped down here. It's now at 13 kilowatts, so that's only a little bit faster than using the onboard AC charger. So it now says that finishing up the charge will take an extra two hours, so 10% to 80%, 40 minutes, 80% to 100%, two hours.